Hi guys, welcome to my podcast. My name is Nicole and I'm the brains and the beauty behind Yarn Craft by Nicole. And I'm really excited about this yarn chat. There's all the fun things I'm gonna get to show you. I've also found <laughs> my ring light and I'm really glad because today is a super stormy day here in New York and there was no way I was gonna get decent light. So my husband has been cleaning out what will be baby girl's room and <laughs> found the top of my tripod that has a ring light on it. So very thankful and very grateful for that today because I feel like I wouldn't be able to show you anything cool <laughs> without this light. Um, uh, so yes, let's get started with this yarn chat. Today, my featured make is my copycat sweater. I have a tutorial out for this. I actually just did a blog post for this on my website, Yarn Craft by Nicole, yesterday. And I really like it. I wanna make another one. Um, <laughs> I have more ideas than I have time, but I really like the way that this one came out. And my goal, we'll see if this happens this year, is to make uh, myself and my husband and baby girl coordinating sweaters. I don't know if they're gonna be matching per se, but this was a good way for me to see if I could take one of my husband's sweaters and kind of do the same thing where I take a few measurements and then make some panels. I'll probably also use the Tunisian simple stitch for his sweater. Probably all of our sweaters if I do it for his. Um, so this was a good kind of trial run for this. So I really like it. Um, I used KNC essential cotton, which I love. I have a little bit more of the cream. I bought it in a variegated as well. And then this, these little embroidered flowers were some leftover cotton yarn that I had. Um, part of me wants to take the cream and make like a teeny tunic for baby girl and then do all the ribbing in hot pink because I think I have enough for a baby sweater ribbing in hot pink. But we will see. We will see. I've got my honeymoon wrap on Francesca the mannequin today. Um, and she's looking great in a fancy kind of, I don't know, over and under way to tie that scarf. And because it is rainy and drizzly, um, I've got a lovely little green tea latte today while we talk. Uh, my alma mater is Valdosta State in South Georgia. Shout out if you've ever heard of it, because unless you're from Georgia or maybe Northern Florida, you might not have, it was a great school. I loved it. I went for undergrad and my master's and highly recommend about also state. So let's get started. I have, let's see, I have two finished objects that I can show you. Since we've been talking about baby girl and sweaters, the first one I'm gonna show you is the pumpkin sweater. Look how cute. Um, this is from Mon Petit Violin Designs. I've made this sweater before in pink and like a linen blend for a friend of mine. I used Big Twist Panoramic, which is a premium acrylic for this one. And I'm making matching sweaters for my daughter and then also for my best friend who's also expecting a little girl two weeks before I am. So they're gonna be very cute. I don't know. I don't think I have quite enough of this color orange for the other sweater, but I have a lighter orange. And I'm thinking that I'll give, that I'll keep the darker orange for me, give the lighter orange to my best friend. Um, so we'll see, we'll see kind of how that shakes out. But I think both sweaters are gonna be adorable. Um, my daughter is gonna have a darker complexion than her daughter. Um, so I think that the darker color will look a little bit the look cuter on mine, but we'll see. Um, both are gonna be super cute, but I really like this. Um, I initially was gonna make the one to two year size, but it was just looking really big in the yoke. So then I went down to the six month to a year size. And um, I also went down to hook size and that was huge. I used this yarn, like this brand of yarn, for the peony peplum dress that I made. And I loved the way that the yarn worked up. I loved how beautiful it was, but I was using a wooden hook 
and it split a decent amount. And when I went down a hook size and used a metal hook for this, when I remade it in the smaller size, game changer, loved it. So I'm glad that this one is now done. And now I know all the tips and tricks to make the second one. So you'll probably see another one next week because it's just too cute to make. And I'm thinking that maybe we will, we'll have to do some sort of like best friends pictures for them for next fall. I think you might hear Scoot coming in here. Yes, that is her Scoot. We'll see if he wants to join, but he is feeling much better. Thank you for everybody that reached out um, either through uh, private messages or comments. Um, his stitches are healing up really well. He's much more himself now that he doesn't have to wear the ear wrap throughout the day. He only has to wear it at night and that's just given him a lot more freedom of movement and it feels better because Eric can get onto the ear. He started playing with toys. He has been begging for food the way that he usually does. Um, so he is much, much more his normal self, which has been good to see. So this is the pumpkin sweater. Um, there will be another one coming soon. I love it. It's so cute. And I'll have, like, I have some of the orange left over. I should have enough green after both of them are finished to make some little decorative pumpkins. I'm thinking of making some Tunisian pumpkins. I've never made crochet pumpkins. I've tried them before. And I think I was trying to make it too complicated. So I'm going to try them again for the street fair that I'm going to do here in a little bit. But I do have some orange left. I just don't think I have enough for a whole nother sweater. But that's a pumpkin sweater. It's adorable. And because it's 100% acrylic, I can throw this in the washer and the dryer. It's not going to be an issue. And it's so soft. Like, I, I really like the way that this came out. Very, very cute. So that was the first finished object. Oh, I will say, I changed the ribbing as well. So the pattern calls for um, a rib that is um, like double crochet and a, like a front post double crochet and back post. I like an applied ribbing better and it gives it a little bit more stretch, um, both on the top and on the bottom. So I did not do the ribbing as the pattern wrote. I did my own ribbing. Um, I've done an applied ribbing in the, let's see, what video have I done an applied ribbing in? I've done it in this in this top. I did an applied ribbing. Um, Teal Yarn Crafts has a good applied ribbing video, um, but I like it better and I think it looks cleaner. So that is one change that I did make. The other thing that I finished was um, this hat. It's just a very simple um, double crochet top down hat. It also has an applied ribbing. I did a, um, a half double crochet ribbing for this hat as opposed to a single double crochet ribbing for that hat. This will also be for the, um, the fair. And I made it so that it's deep enough that you could flip up the ribbing there. It's probably how I would wear it. Or if you have a bigger head or just more hair than I do, um, you could also wear it like this. I think it's cute. I don't know why hats give me such an issue, um, but they do. Just the fit of hats. The fact that I don't really wear many hats, I think is also part of the problem. Um, but I tried this hat a few different times and part of it was I had a, I didn't have a full skein of yarn for this because um, I was trying to use what I had in stash. And so the first hat idea didn't work because I didn't have enough yarn. And then the second hat idea was just coming out way big. I don't know. So sometimes just simple is better. This is, um, this is another big twist yarn. I think it's just called Heather. Um, and I had it left over from a baby blanket that I did and it's pretty thick. I went down a hook size from what I would usually use for, for a worsted. I usually use a J. I used an H for this. Um, so it's pretty thick. It's pretty dense. So this is another thing that was for the fair. And then I've got two more things that I've been working on. I am also happy to say that I'm officially in this New Rochelle, uh, New Rochelle Street Fair. So if you're in New Rochelle um, on September 10th, come out and see me. Um, I was worried because 
like most fairs you had to apply and um I was I was just worried that the information I had given them was not enough for them to say yes you should be a part of our fair. I've never done a craft fair before. I think it's probably an unfounded um, fear but when I got the confirmation email I was thrilled. So probably either this weekend or sometime next week I'll be doing some shopping to figure out what I want the table to look like, um, how I want to do a sign so that people can easily find us. Um, my husband has agreed to help me work the booth, which is super helpful. Um, and he was very sweet. Last year for my birthday, he had um, yarn craft by Nicole shirts made for our families. So we actually both have our uniforms for that day too. <laughs> that's um, that's exciting and I'm, I'm happy about that. So yeah, I think from now until then, I'll probably have one or two projects going that are not tied to the fair and then going through as much as I can with um, yarn that I already have for projects for the fair. I'm also going to be using all of the stuff that I currently have on Etsy, um, bringing that to the fair. I know I want to make some gnomes. I know I want to do some mug rugs. In fact, I don't know if you can see this yarn. Um, I bought this yarn at a fiber festival um, in Ann Arbor two years ago, one year ago. It's very pretty. Let's see if it'll focus. Um, but I'm thinking, because I have it in purple and I have it in this color, that I might make myself some sort of a cowl or scarf and then use leftovers for mug rugs, because I feel like this is a really good texture for that. So we'll see. Um, we'll see how much gets done between now and then. Um, yeah, but I have several ideas for things to, to have and bring. The, um, one of the other things that I'm working on for the fair, going back to the hat that did not work because I didn't have enough yarn. I do for sure have enough yarn to do this hat and this yarn. Um, this is actually yarn I bought for a vest. I made the entire vest. I made it without a pattern. I really liked the yarn, but I really didn't like the fit of the vest. It was, I think it was just a little bit too boxy and stiff. So I took it apart. I've made myself a scarf out of it, and then I still have plenty left over. So I'm making a ribbed hat. I'm using um, half double crochet in the back loop. And basically what I'm doing is I am, <laughs> excuse me, um, crocheting a rectangle. And then once it gets to the um, circumference I need for a hat, I'll seam up the side and then it'll have a fold over brim. That's an awful way to hold it. Let me try again. And then I'll, I'll seam the top closed. So it'll kind of look like that. But I really like this. This is homespun tweed. I believe, uh, I don't remember. The name of the yarn company but it's called homespun tweed and i really like it it feels good and that will be another hat for the fair and then even though i took a hiatus from pattern testing um right when we were moving and right when i found out i was pregnant um for a lot of reasons i took a break from pattern testing um i've done a little bit since then there's a secret one that I think I can show you in a few weeks that use that frosted stitch yarn. It's very cute. Um, and then I've signed up for another secret one, which I'm pretty pumped about, but this one is not a secret, so I can show it to you. So this is the Certainly Cypress Cardigan from Handcrafted, Haley Handcrafted. And it's coming along really well. In fact, this will go right into our yarn love segment. Um, I have just gotten to the point where I am splitting for the front panels, which is why I've got a couple of stitch markers in here. Um, I'll probably finish this front panel today and then start on the back panel before I do the other side. So I like this a lot. Um, I've made the Certainly Cypress Tea which was um, a pattern test that she had last year, I think, 
That one uses sport weight yarn. This one uses DK. Um, however, with Haley's patterns, it's very easy to substitute one yarn for another by going up a hook size because a lot of her patterns are uh, made to measure. So it's pretty simple to switch things out if you wanted to. For this one, I wanted something in a color I didn't have. I don't have anything this color. It's really pretty. It's a little bit more muted, I think, than I usually go, um, but I love it. I think it's gonna be great for fall. And it is Patagonia. It's 100% organic merino. I say that, let me make sure I'm saying that right. No, just 100% wool, not necessarily or, uh, merino. And um, it's from Juniper Moon Farms. They have it in a lot of colors and it's a, it's a good like budget yarn. I want to say that I spent maybe 15 ish dollars a, a skein for this and it has um, 382 yards and it's a light DK. Let's see if it'll, the light is working against me there. I bought this from Spun. Um, I haven't found a yarn store here, like a local yarn store that is close to where I live that has a large selection. Um, so I knew that Spun would have this because I had seen it Spun and they sent it so fast. And whenever I order from Spun, I know that they're going to check dye lots for me. And it came with a little sticker. It came with a pin. I just love Spun. I miss Spun. I miss Ann Arbor. Um, but I got four hanks of this and um, my goal is to make a long sleeve hip length cardigan. So very excited about it. It's, it's definitely not a super soft yarn. Um, it's, it's a more rustic yarn, which I like, and it really does well in this um, particular pattern. And because it's something I wanted it to transition from summer to fall, I wanted a wool. I wanted something that was not going to be too heavy, um, but also not be too, um, something that's going to hold a little bit more warmth as well. So I'm loving it for this project. Um, I think it's coming out super cute. I love the color. It's a very springy yarn. Um, I'm very pleased with this. Very, very pleased with this. And it's been fun to work up and pretty quick. I started this I mean, since our last podcast, and I'm already th to the sleeve split. So, very happy about that. The other yarns that I've gotten as part of Yarn Love, I ordered a while ago. I was very excited to see that um, this dyer was shipping all the yarns from this collection this week. So, this is a new to me yarn company, Dying Wishes Yarn Co. And she had a greatest hits basically, um, re-release collection. So I got these two yarns from her. They're gorgeous. Are you going to focus on them? There we go. They're gorgeous. I love them. Um, this one is called The Vision. If you have seen what I wore to Comic-Con this year, you know that I love um, Scarlet Witch and The Vision. So, and this is just such a beautiful moody green like I just hadn't seen a green like this before and then this one is called basic birch one of these days I'm gonna make a cardigan that is a black and white print but I wasn't ready to invest that much money in a garment right then when this was coming out so I just got one skein of this but I really like it um it's a black and white speckle it's got a little bit of brown just little hints of brown in there as well. Um, both of these are on her Shocking Sock face, which is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Um, I use a lot of fingering weight yarn, so that's why I bought it in fingering weight, but I really, really like these. I have no idea what they will become. I don't know if they'll go in a project together. They look good together and it would be a cute, Christmas project. It would be a very cute Christmas project. So we'll see. Um, yeah, can you imagine like maybe even some color work where this is the background and this makes little trees? That could be very cute. 
we will see. We will see what that is. But that is it. I ordered, um, let's see, what other yarn have I ordered? I ordered yarn for the granny spur top that's not here yet. Um, and then I think I have some frosted stitch coming in soon. Um, the Jaws colorway that she did that I did the cowl for, the shark fin cowl. Um, she released some minis for that, so I stocked up on that. I also um, found a new to me yarn dyer called Amanda Knits. She's on Instagram if you want to go give her a follow. And um, she is doing a mini yarn club where you get a mini skein of yarn and a micro mini. So I think the mini stain is 20, the micro mini might be 10 grams, and it's 15 bucks a month and it includes shipping. So I signed up for that and I'm very excited to see what that'll look like. And I've, for a while I've wanted to do some sort of a yarn subscription service. However, I want it to be something that is manageable because I feel like if I got a full skein of yarn every month or even a 50 grain hank every month, um, I don't know how easy that would be for, um, for me to keep up with and to use at that pace. At this point, it feels like most yarns, like most colorways, I guess not most yarns, but most types of colors, like I can find something fun to put it into. And I feel like with minis, that'll be even easier because it could be part of color work on a sweater for myself. It could be something for my little girl, like little headbands. I feel like I can use minis. So I'm very excited about that. Very pumped um, about all of that and how that will come together. And that's all I've got this week to show y'all. Um, I feel like I've done a lot of crocheting, but it also feels like I didn't show you that many things. Maybe it's because it's only been a week instead of two weeks like last time. So I will wrap it up with what I can't let go. Um, and other than Scoot feeling much more like himself, um, which has been a huge weight lifted off of our shoulders, um, to see him behaving like Scoot and not feeling as nervous or as, um, worried as he was before has been amazing. Um, the other thing I can't let go of is kind of silly, but it's true. So I have had the same mini hair dryer since college and I graduated 2014. So almost 10 years ago, 2016 with my master's, 2014 with my undergrad. And it was this like $13 zebra like mini hair dryer that I bought at Walmart. And then every time that we've moved, I'm like, I'll just keep it until it dies. And then once it dies, like that's when I'll get rid of it. And it hasn't like it's, it's lasted this whole time. And I don't, I don't even remember what brand it was, but this past week I was using it. And I was like, there, there's just not, it's, it's not dead, but it is dying. And I mentioned it to my husband who usually laughs at some of my frugality and was like just maybe maybe it is time that you buy a new one and maybe you should spend more than $13 on it so I bought a like a Conair um light blue and gold it's really pretty I think it's called like the infinity pro series <laughs> and I used it for the first time this morning I don't blow dry my hair every day um but I figured I wanted to look cute for y'all on the podcast and as soon as I cut it on, I was like, oh, this is the amount of, of air that I should be getting from a hairdryer. Cool, cool. I have definitely been doing this wrong for a while. So that's what I can't let go of. It's simple and silly, but you know what? Sometimes during a week, that's what we need. I hope you enjoyed this yarn chat. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and um, subscribe if you have not already. And I will see you back here next week. Bye, guys.